Hello everyone, uh, Charles here. Uh, it's been a minute since I've created a new video um, regarding transitioning. However, I received uh, some good questions uh, recently and um, thought that it would help um, other people potentially. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this is a follow-up to uh, <clears throat> speaking with a professor at a college and um, they, after speaking with his class, uh, there are some more questions. Um, so uh, let me just kind of dig into that right now. Uh, so he he says here that, um, if I recall correctly, you said you felt like a man for as long as you can remember. At what age do you think you were able to articulate the idea that you had been issued the wrong uniform? I thought this metaphor might make the concept more accessible to cisgender students. Do you think it works, or would it reinforce the false impression that transgender identity is nothing more than a choice? So a couple questions there, obviously. Um, as far as the metaphor, I actually, I like it, you know, um, issued the wrong uniform. I've not heard it that way before, uh, but I personally don't take any offense to that. Um, I think it's a uh, unique way of describing it, and it's um, a way that, uh, like you said, uh, other um, students, you know, or just any cisgender individual, um, maybe that can give a little bit um, better uh, description for, you know, for them to understand. So, um, <clears throat> As far as what age was I able to articulate the idea that I was issued the wrong uniform, literally for as far back as I can remember. Um, I would say my earliest memory was approximately when I was four or five. Um, I always felt like a boy, okay? I always knew that was who I was. Um, I... I couldn't tell you how many times growing up I would go to bed and because I grew up in you know a family well part of my family I guess is religious uh, the other part was not and um, you know the part that was you know they always said to to pray you know pray for you know the things that you um, well, for all kinds of things I'm not going to get into all that but the only thing that I continued to pray for was to wake up in the correct body. And every morning I was so disappointed because I'm yet again in the incorrect body. And, you know, the, the whole, that it's a choice, you know, it's, it's a choice to move forward with transitioning, absolutely. Is it a choice to be born in the wrong body? Absolutely not. Um, to feel that way, it's... It is very confusing, depressing. Um, you know, a good portion, I, I can't remember the exact statistics, and this was from a few years ago, but I mean, it was over 90% of transgender individuals um, that, and and let's clarify this. So there's, there's the non-binary aspect, but there's also, also just just transgender okay i don't know how to else to describe that other than you were assigned at birth female but you inside are a male okay and vice versa that is particularly what i'm talking about as far as the statistic i wouldn't know as far as non-binary um but i do know it's kind of in that realm so Anyways, uh, over 90% of transgender individuals don't make it to 30. Um, they, you know, it's it, suicide is a huge thing because it is so much to deal with. And then you're dealing with not only feeling this on the inside and, and just like, I just want to be who I am on the outside, but you're also dealing with uh, families um, completely removing you from their lives or keeping you in their lives and going ahead and continuing to push that dagger in and, you know, um, you know, using the correct or the incorrect pronouns, using the incorrect name, using every, you know, and just, and it's just a dagger every single time and you get to relive it over and over and over. 
and it doesn't feel good, <laughs> you know? Um, but a lot of people, they will keep those people in their lives because they love them. Um, and they also, some will keep them in their lives because they feel like they don't have any other choice. Well, that's, that's my family. So I agree and I have, I have had very similar feelings, but at the same time, um, chosen family is, is, has been the route to go for me. Um, as far as, um, any family members that, um, just choose to not accept me for who I am. Okay. So, and, and, and not only are you dealing with family and, and friends and, or who you thought were friends, now you're dealing with society as well. And you get to hear that, uh, transgender individuals are pedophiles. So you can't, you know, they can't use, you know, the bathroom that they should be going into. Um, I don't know where that ever came from, but it is absolutely asinine. It did. <laughs> not even going to get into that can of worms okay but because it is just drilled into society and you know um and whatever else you know they're freaks they're you know they're not uh, they shouldn't have the same rights that a cisgender individual should have you know all these things you hear them and you read them and you see them and you get to live it day after day after day and you begin to believe it you know, uh, there's been plenty of times I won't even go into the bathroom because I don't want to deal with it. And I pass. <laughs> Not everyone does, you know, and that is, I mean, I feel like that right there should, should tell people something, you know, that it's, it is ingrained in us that we are, you know, bad people or we're, wrong or were evil or were whatever, you know, so you get to live with that. And it's, it, it is absolutely not a choice. Like I said, it's a choice to move forward with transitioning. Um, and even then, sometimes it's a choice because it's freaking expensive. And, you know, finding good uh, doctors, endocrinologists, surgeons, things like that, that actually care, you know, that, um, it's, it's more prevalent today. You know, you can find those people a little bit easier now, but you know, even five to 10 years ago, you couldn't. And, and it's not, um, even then it's not easy to come by even today, you know, like it's now there's, there's more things, you know, there's more, um, there is more acceptance. There is more knowledge on it. So Anyway, um, I know I've gone a little off topic on that, but I feel like some of that is needed. I need to say some of that so that you can understand that, you know, um, as far as uh, being in the, the wrong uniform, you know, that I, I can remember it for as far back as I can remember. Um, and it's, I, I uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's the only way I can, um, I guess, kind of describe that. So, uh, earliest memory, uh, about four or five. Um, and then, you know, from there on out, that was all I ever wanted was just to be myself. Um, you know, my plan, and I may have told you this in our last meeting, but, you know, I, I can't remember if I did or not, but my plan was to save up enough money to be able to move, move, transition. Once I was fully, you know, uh, you know, done and I felt like I could pass and things like that, then I was going to move yet again and um, start my life as that person there and forget everyone else. Yeah, maybe not forget, but I was literally just going to be a missing person. I thought that was the only choice that I had. Um, because of the unacceptance around me, um, because of what people would say, you know, just, just in general about other transgender individuals or just to the topic, you know, um, that isn't, if you don't have a safe place in the world, then why stick around? You know, um, 
and I know that the, there are many people that, that feel that way that are in this realm. So, um, yeah. Do you remember any time that you were genuinely unsure of your gender? Uh, if so, do you remember your approximate age? If not, do you know if this is common among other transgender people around certain ages? Um, I have never been genuinely unsure. Um, I have always genuinely known that I was a man. Uh, I The only unsure portion that I had was, how do I move forward? Do I tell people or do I go the route of being a missing person? Um, you know, I know many people that have come out and then they're sent to um, conversion camps. Um, yes, that is still a thing today. Um, you know, a lot of people say that it doesn't exist and uh, it absolutely does. I know people that have been through it and it is uh, terrifying and um, just, it's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, so... I have never been unsure. I, let's see, do you know if it's common among other transgender people? So when it comes to the non-binary realm, yes, I do think it's common among them. Um, and I am not speaking from experience because that's not who I am. Um, but my take on it is they're very, there's kind of gender fluid, you know, they, one day they're feeling more masculine, another day they're feeling more feminine. And that's the part they bring out. And I, gender is on a spectrum. I don't care who you are. Um, you can be all the way this way. You can be all the way that way. You can be right dead center in the middle. Or you can be somewhere else. It's just kind of this, it, it's a spectrum, you know. And um, it's... Many times, gender and sexuality get kind of molded together in this one topic, and it's it's not it's it's two separately, you know, it's two separate things. Okay, um, but no matter what, we all have, no matter whether you're trans or cisgender or gay or whatever, you know, um, it doesn't matter where you're at. Okay. There, there is, there are parts of us that are more feminine. There are parts of us that are more masculine. There are days where you feel a little bit more masculine or feminine. That's just the way that it is. Uh, some people, they, trying to think of the right word for this they they take it in and they express it and other people don't other people they just hide it you know especially uh, i've noticed a lot with cisgender men um you know it's it's uh, a sign of weakness to cry to show emotion to this to that it doesn't mean they don't have that though and it's i wouldn't call that a feminine or masculine trait but it's still it's on that scale okay and vice versa there are women that have you know a more um aggressive side or you know what we you know in society call masculine we're all just human and we all have different things and different areas in our lives that are on this scale. And it's not just about gender. It's not just about sexuality. It's just about life, you know? And it, and it, it could be things that you choose to wear. It can be uh, movies that you watch, you know? A dude watching chick flicks. Some people think that that's wrong, whatever. Like, I, you know, it's, it's everything in society. It's the way you walk. It's the way you talk. It's the way you dress. It's, you know, all these things. And, um, you know, we're all somewhere on that scale, and it changes for a lot of people. It changes from day to day, or it changes from year to year as we grow as humans, as we learn more about ourselves, um, as we learn more about others. So hopefully that um, 
helps to answer your question. Um, <clears throat> Assuming you had the resources and support to access them at the right age, what difference might puberty blockers have made for you? Have you met any transgender people currently or previously on puberty, blo puberty, puberty blockers? Could you share any thoughts they might have given you on their experiences? So, assuming you had the resources and support to access them at the right age, what difference? might they have made for me. Um, if I could have, I would have started when I was very young. If I could have, I would have just flipped a switch like that. Um, I, again, from age four or five. So um, <clears throat> I just wanted to fit in and I wanted to fit in where I knew I was as a human on the inside. So uh, it would have made a huge difference. It would have made, <clears throat> I, I would have been accepted as who I always was instead of having to wait until I was almost 30 years old, you know? Um, I, I wouldn't, I, I could have just been myself, you know? Uh, so have I met other transgender people that were on them? Yes. Um, I actually, one of my friends in particular, uh, he got to start when he was much, much younger. I can't remember if it was middle school or high school. It was one or the other. Um, and he got to um, even get surgery uh, when he was much younger. He had a very supportive family. And it was one of the most beautiful things, you know, him and his mom have this amazing connection because they, they went through it together. And, you know, like I said, his family was very supportive. Whereas I got to hide mine. I got to hide mine for forever, you know, and I, I was taught that it was wrong and it was this bad and evil thing. And, you know, um, they are, you know, pedophiles and this and that, you know. So, and, and I am not close to that part of my family at all and it's there's a you know part of me that's very sad about that because i want to have that and i wish that i could have gone through that you know um he got to go through one puberty not um not two <laughs> so you know um i got and, and, and maybe that's maybe that's a plus for me i got to experience both so i can understand both genders a little bit more. Maybe that's a little bit of a blessing. Um, however, it was extremely um, difficult. It was just difficult, you know, because that's, that's not who I was. So uh, he was very, uh, as far as his experience, you know, he was, he had love, he had support. He is a thriving individual that's, you know, um, you know, he really didn't lose, you know, a bunch of people, you know, like many people do. He didn't become homeless because of it. He didn't just get kicked out into the street. You know, he was given this love and that is not common. So it's becoming a little bit more common, but still it's, it's a huge issue today. So, uh, you know, um, that's, I think that that answers that. Um, and I've met others too that, that did take puberty blockers. Um, and you know, it was, it, it's really awesome because, um, some of them don't end up needing surgery, um, for at least uh, female to male. Okay. Because they don't actually like develop full breasts and everything. They don't have to go through the top surgery portion. Um, bottom obviously is a little bit different um, if that's something that they choose to go through. Uh, but there also isn't a good surgery for bottom surgery um, for female to male currently. So it's you know, a little bit better, but um, yeah, there's a lot of risks involved and many surgeries involved, and a, you know, a ton of money and all kinds of things like that. So uh, anyway, um, some of them didn't have to get that because they could just do, you know, bench press and push-ups and things like that and really like build 
that chest but not have to worry about all that like the fatty tissue and everything else that comes with having breasts so or having a female breast so uh so physically mentally all of that um it would have been very beneficial uh to me and to uh, many of my my friends as well if they could have been on that what are your thoughts on attempts to criminalize gender-affirming treatment for children. For context, last year, the Texas governor and attorney general ordered Child Protective Services to investigate parents who seek gender-affirming care for their children. Those investigations continue to be carried out, sometimes over the objections of the CPS agents who conduct the initial reviews. Additionally, a state legislator just proposed a law that would make it a felony to seek or provide gender-affirming medical care. How might such laws affect you if they were passed? So, um, my thoughts on attempts to criminalize gender-affirming treatment for children um, are that that actually that, that should not be criminalized. <laughs> um, I th I think it's ridiculous. I think it is damaging. I think it is damaging to the child to not be able to and damaging to the parents and their relationship with that child, along with that child's future. Um, like I said, not many make it past 30. Uh, over 90% don't make it past 30. So um, that's just, yep, um, as far as uh, the state legislator uh, proposing a law that make it a felony to seek or provide gender affirming medical care. Uh, that would absolutely, I mean, if that's for even adults, that, um, that would affect me in a very negative way. Um, that could make me, um, I mean, that would mess me up uh, medically. That would um, potentially, um, I, I, well, actually, I mean, if I couldn't have, uh, you know, if I couldn't continue to get hormones, hormone treatment, then um, that would give me a very high risk of getting breast cancer, actually. Um, according to my surgeon, uh, once you have uh, had top surgery, uh, and I'm not sure if this is the same for male to female and in which surgeries, you know, things like that. This is specifically for top surgery, female to male. Uh, but once you have that, um, and you've already been on, uh, HRT, then if you stop it, um, for any period of time, it does increase your risk of getting breast cancer. So, um, health-wise, it could be horrible. Um, mentally, it would kill me, you know. Um, physically, it probably would end up leading to that as well. I would be a very depressed human uh, if I could not be myself. Um, it wouldn't, it, it, even before, I mean, when I was presenting as a female, um, I was not happy. Uh, I went down a very dark road of uh, self-mutilation and drugs. Um, it was not a good thing. I was not a healthy human. Um, so it would just, it would be the end of me if that were a thing. Um, so I hope that helps to answer your questions. Uh, if you have any more, let me know and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability.